Yes, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for terror. Stay tuned for shivers and excitement. Listen to Craig Dennis in The Boogeyman Will Get You. Written by Robert Block for Weird Tales magazine and adapted by the author especially for this program. You'll hear it now if you... Stay tuned for terror. And now, here is Craig Dennis in The Boogeyman Will Get You. You're afraid of the dark, aren't you? Oh, but you are. I know all about you. Do you understand? You were afraid of the dark when you were a child. Not because of robbers or thieves or murderers. Children don't think of such things. You were afraid of the dark because of the boogeyman. That's the name your parents used, boogeyman. One of those smart, sophisticated, grown-up words. But there is terror behind it. When you were a child, you knew what the boogeyman looked like. You would see him in your dreams. That black, grinning shape with the wicked red eyes and the clutching claws. You heard his buzzing voice mumbling to you in sleep when you had nightmares. And you'd wake up screaming for your mother. Admit it. You did scream, didn't you? Now that you're grown up, you laugh about it. But deep down inside, you're still afraid. You say you don't believe such things? It's all superstition. (laughs) Then why are you still afraid of the dark? Why do you keep the lights on when you're home alone at night? I'll tell you why. Because you know it's true. There are such things as monsters. There are such evil beings. And the boogeyman will get you if you don't watch out. Well, what do you think of it? Marvelous. I don't know how you do it, Walter. Great stuff. You say it's part of a new essay? That's right. Looks like I'll have it finished this week. But, Walter, you work too hard. Cooped up all day long in that cottage of yours. Why don't you relax? That's just why I rented the cottage. To stay cooped up and get some work done. A book doesn't write itself, you know. I don't see how you fellas do it. Writing, I mean. Me, I'll stick to the insurance business. Life insurance must be a wonderful thing. You mean to tell me you're not insured, man? Oh, wait a minute now, darling. Walter, you'll have to excuse that husband of mine. He's always trying to sell something. Lewis, let the poor man alone. We invite him over here tonight for a visit, remember? I appreciate it, too. You folks are very kind to ask me in, but I'm apt to bore you with my essays. Bore me? Oh, nonsense. You nearly scared me stiff. Is that why Nancy isn't around? Do I scare her, too? Oh, of course not. Child's probably out with her gang, you know, the Bobby Sox crowd. Nancy is a very remarkable young woman. She 
She didn't strike me as a typical member of the younger generation at all. Well, she isn't really. Nancy is very mature for 17. Too mature, I'm afraid. Sometimes she comes out with something that surprises me. Really? Yes. Now, take what she was saying about you the other Lewis, day. Lewis. Oh, <coughs> I guess I put my foot in at that time. Nancy said something about me? What was it? Oh, uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Matter of fact, I've, I've forgotten just exactly what it was. Please, tell me. I won't be offended. I'm curious. I've noticed that daughter of yours watching me, and I've wondered about it. Well, you'll have to excuse her, Walter. She's just a kid, after all. She said... Well, we were talking about why we never saw you in the daytime, out in the tennis court or at the beach. And she said, that's not so strange. Vampires always sleep in the daytime. Vampires? Don't adolescents get the funniest notion sometimes? Yes. Yes, they do. And she's aw awfully interested in you, really, Walter. After all, you're handsome, stranger here at the resort, an older man. I do believe she's getting a crush on you, but tries to hide it by crazy remarks. Calling you a vampire... Where does she get such ideas? Reads too many books, I'd say. Yes. Sly kid, though. I asked her why she thought you were a vampire. Know what she said? What did she say? Said it was because you didn't eat any food. She said what? Nancy said she'd asked around town at the grocery store and the butcher shop and that you never bought any food. I shut her up in a hurry, though. Young lady, I said, apparently you don't know much about bachelor's eating habits. Did you ever hear of places called restaurants? You should have seen the look on Nancy's face when I... Why, hello, Nancy. We we were just talking about you. So I heard. Well, your manners, dear. Aren't you going to say hello to Mr. King? Good evening, Nancy. Nancy, Mr. King spoke to you. Nancy, what are you doing, child? <laughs> She's making the sign of the cross, an ancient custom. It's supposed to ward off vampires. That's a good one. Well, young lady, how come you were running around in the dark tonight? Aren't you afraid of evil spirits? Don't joke about things you don't understand, Father. Nancy, that's no way to talk to your father. Where were you? Oh, just walking with Billy Leggett. Up in the hills under the hemlock trees. I suppose that's where you lost your scarf, young lady. My, my... Oh, oh yes, I... I didn't know I'd lost it. Well, folks, I've got to be running along. It's getting late. So soon? Yes, it's, it's getting a little late. All right, Walter. See you around. You sure you don't mind walking home alone? Oh, of course not. Maybe we could send Nancy along with you to protect you from vampires. Nancy was a silly little girl. I knew it. But still, she upset me. Maybe it was because she was so beautiful and she hated me so. Thought I was a vampire. Just a silly little girl with a queer idea in her pretty head. I wondered what she was trying to do. At night, when I got back to the cottage, I found out. I stood in front of the door and saw something lying on the path. It was Nancy Scott. What had she been doing here? She said she had gone for a walk to the hills near the hemlock trees, but here was her scarf. And as I opened the door, my hand touched something. A wreath on the doorknob. A wreath of hemlock. Hemlock. That's what you put on the door to keep vampires away. I thought about it all night. What was that girl up to? The next day, I investigated a little. I found out plenty. Nancy had spread talk all over the village. Talk about me, about my habits, how I stayed in all day and came out at night, about my not eating at home. She'd even tried to call New York to check up on me, whether I really had a job and so on told the minister I didn't dare come to church and said I had no mirrors in my house because a vampire couldn't look into mirrors. This wasn't funny anymore. The foolish kid was making trouble for me. Somehow she had this mad obsession about vampires. I had to talk to her. So that night I started over for her place, but before I arrived, I ran into her by accident on the path. Oh. Oh, you startled me. Sorry, Nancy. I didn't mean to frighten you. But say, I've been looking for you. Let's take a walk, shall we? Well, um, really, Mr. King, I have a date. Only for a few minutes, my dear, and why so formal? Call me Walter. By the way, I seem to have a speck in my eye. Have you a mirror in your purse? A mirror? Why, yes. Uh, 
here it is. Oh, good. Let's see. Ah. There, I've got it. No, oh, thank you. You looked into the mirror. Of course. And I found that hemlock on my doorknob last night, too. Oh, don't look so startled, Nancy. I know all about your ideas. You thought I was a vampire, didn't you? Just because I work all day and eat in restaurants and walk at night. But you're wrong. You know that now, don't you? I look in mirrors and touch hemlock and all the rest. Yes, I... I see. I... I guess you think I'm an awful fool, Walter. Not at all. I think you're a very lovely girl. I wish it wasn't so dark out here so I could... See your hair? You have beautiful hair, Nancy. Look, the moon is rising. I can see you now. Nancy, you aren't afraid of me anymore. No. Walter, I... I never was afraid. Not really. I, I just thought up all this vampire stuff to, to make you notice me. And besides, all vampires are tall and dark and... And handsome, like you. You're a very clever little girl, Nancy. Very clever. Only I... I wish you hadn't gone to the police today. Police? Then you know? Yes. I found that out, too. A search warrant for my house. Oh, but... But that was all a joke. And, and you aren't really a vampire, so it doesn't matter. When they come, we'll laugh at them. I'll laugh at them. You won't. Walter, what are you doing? Let go of me. Walter, what's happening to you? You're changing. Walter! Too bad you were such a meddling little fool, Nancy. <gasps> I can't let you get away now. It would spoil everything. You guessed too much. Oh, Walter, let me go. Walter! Oh, good heaven! Then it is true. You are a vampire. No, my dear. I'm not. A vampire. I'm just a werewolf. You have just heard Craig Dennis in The Boogeyman Will Get You. Written by Robert Block, author of stories in Weird Tales magazine. The original music was conceived and played by Romel Fay. In just a moment, we'll tell you about the next story in... Stay tuned for terror. In the meantime... 